I'm really glad that I thoroughly enjoyed An Education in Murder. This is the fifth Mystery 101 film. It's directed by Michael Robinson and stars, of course, Jill Wagner as Amy and Christopher Palaha as Travis. And the reason I say I'm really glad I enjoyed this is because the first three were really good, but the fourth one was horrendous. And I was slightly concerned it was a shift in quality, but thankfully that doesn't seem to be the case. This is a really enjoyable story. And of course, as always, there won't be any spoilers other than me telling you whether or not I worked out who it was beforehand. I will tell you that in a moment, but I won't go into any spoiler details. And this one is a really fascinating story that makes perfect sense for Amy to be involved. And I say that because sometimes with Hallmark Mysteries, the protagonist's involvement is a bit of a stretch. But with this one, it makes perfect sense because it's very literary driven. Uh, a former colleague of Amy's was actually convicted of murder uh, at some point before this film was set. And uh, a writer is looking to write a book about the murder, convinced that the person who was convicted, a character called Mac, played by Steve Basic, was innocent. And... She talks to Amy as a, a former colleague of, of Max, and Amy also believes he was innocent. So she's very keen to find out what this writer knows or why her instincts make her think that Mac was innocent. And as she digs a little bit deeper into this, Amy also begins to to dig deeper. But as she starts to look into things, she begins to be threatened. And then some other unexpected things happen. But I really don't want to say any more than that. But I, I rather enjoyed this one. And I, I found it to be a, a very well-written, well-structured narrative with a great pace. It didn't take us too long to get to the point of the narrative at all. And I feel like we were given various clues at a, at a pretty steady rate. Things were changing at a steady rate. Just as we get comfortable with one idea, we're, we're flung in a different direction. But a direction that makes sense within the context of the narrative. And I will say now that I did not work it out. I think maybe for the tiniest little second, I thought... Maybe there's something about this that I'm drawn to as a potential outcome. But I immediately dismissed that thought. I didn't entertain it for a second. So for me personally, I didn't see the whodunit coming. But once we find out, it makes sense. It's not one of those, as I've mentioned before, I hate it when there's a murder mystery or any kind of crime mystery and the... Uh, the culprit is unexpected, but so much so that it doesn't make any sense. It really ruins an otherwise potentially good story. That's not the case here. I think everything makes sense. Once we have the dots connected for us, I was quite happy with the way things went. So for me, I really enjoyed every aspect of the narrative, the narrative development, the pacing, the, the final outcome, just everything for me was very well written and Amy and Travis were both very likable. I feel like Travis was ever so slightly being a little bit unprofessional. Nothing dramatic, but just a, a tiny bit. But unlike the previous film, where he was incredibly, very atypically unprofessional, there was just something about the previous Mystery 101 that it just felt completely disconnected from the other three films. And now I can say from this film, the quality is just completely different. The character writing is different. I don't know why, but certainly Travis is back to his pretty usual brilliant self here. Slightly unprofessional, but generally nothing, nothing that bothers me very much at all. It's a gripping and for me quite unpredictable narrative. Very well written, great characters great mystery. Really thoroughly enjoyed it and I'm very, very happy to say that An Education in Murder is a brilliant Mystery 101 film and with only, I think, two left, I'm going to be pretty devastated once I've finished them. <laughs>